Here on Earth Lab, I've done a lot of drugs. LSD, cannabis, even steroids, and I am not done yet. I'm gonna go for the full set, because unlike actual drug abuse, you won't have any nasty side effects from an overdose of science. Although I can't promise you won't find it mildly addictive. So, let's take a look at what heroin does to the body. Also known as smack, skag, horse, gear and brown, heroin has a colourful and lengthy history. The drug has its roots, so to speak, in the opium poppy. Evidence of the cultivation of these poppies has been found as far back as Neolithic times, more than 6,000 years ago. Poppies were slit open and their opium containing sap collected and consumed. In this way, opium remained a popular drug for millennia. Opium dens, supposedly frequented by a certain Mr. Holmes, were especially common during the 1800s, and it was around 1810 that the drug morphine was first extracted from the resin of the opium poppy. Morphine had incredible pain-killing effects, producing a state of numbness and euphoria that made it the go-to drug for surgery. And it's still used today when other painkillers just don't cut the mustard there was a problem. At the time, little was known about how addictive morphine could be, and it was used so liberally during the American Civil War that it left tens of thousands of soldiers hopelessly addicted and dependent on the drug. In response to this, heroin made its grand entrance. Derived from morphine by German scientists, it was marketed as the new wonder drug, a safe and non-addictive alternative to morphine. It could be used to treat everything from headaches and colds to depression and even old age. Age. But, spoiler alert, heroin wasn't non-addictive at all. In fact, it was still very, very addictive. And following decades of unregulated and legal over-the-counter distribution, even free samples being sent in the post, by the beginning of the 20th century, there were hundreds of thousands of heroin addicts worldwide. Heroin was severely restricted under the Geneva Convention in 1925, and in the UK it's now a Class A illegal drug, but that doesn't deter some from seeking its mood and mind-altering effects. So, how does it work? When injected or smoked, the active chemical compound in heroin, diamorphine, is able to reach the brain quickly via the blood. Once in the brain, enzymes convert it to morphine, and that starts to alter the balance of natural chemicals in the nervous system. Zooming in on the brain, you'd find billions of neurons responsible for relaying information, and between them, billions of connections called synapses. At the synapses, the heroin-derived morphine binds to specific opioid receptors, and that triggers the release of dopamine, one of your so-called feel-good hormones. As more and more heroin reaches the brain and tricks it into releasing more and more dopamine, users experience something that's often described as a rush of euphoria. And while that might not sound too bad, it's only the tip of the heroin iceberg. What follows is much more dangerous and damaging. Let's not forget that diamorphine and morphine are primarily painkillers, and that's in part because of their slowing effects on the nervous system. After the initial rush of dopamine euphoria, heroin users will begin to feel drowsy, they'll be unable to think clearly, and their heart rate and breathing rate will be severely slowed. And it's this last one that is particularly dangerous, because without enough oxygen getting into the blood and the brain, you risk coma and brain damage. That lethargic funk can last for several hours, depending on the dose, but even if you manage to avoid the perils of a heroin trip, the danger is far from over. That's because, just like its predecessors morphine and opium, heroin is unbelievably addictive. Even after using it once, you can build up both tolerance and physical dependence that change your brain and your behaviour forever. Tolerance is where the intensity of the drug's effects decrease each time it's taken, meaning you need to take more to achieve the same high, and when you take more, the slowing effects are greater and longer lasting, putting you at more and more risk. And physical dependence, that's where the body simply adapts to having the drug within it. And whenever you don't have heroin in your system, you experience truly horrible withdrawal symptoms like diarrhea and vomiting and muscle pain, restlessness, insomnia. Basically, once you're addicted to heroin, which is horrendously easy to do, seeking and taking more of the drug becomes your sole 
purpose in life and that is not a cool way to live. It's not just the psychological effects that are distressing either. Evidence shows that the continued presence of the heroin in the brain can fundamentally change its structure and function and those changes are not easily reversed. White matter, the critical pathways between the information containing parts of the brain, can deteriorate, making it harder for a user to make decisions or react to situations appropriately. Add that to the damage to the nasal septum that comes from repeatedly snorting the heroin or the scarring and infection from injecting the drug straight into the blood, and suddenly heroin isn't looking so much like a wonder drug, more a slippery slope to destruction. I think if anything deserves a prize for short-term gain outweighed by long-term pain, heroin will be right up on the podium. What started out as an innocent experiment in pain relief now affects more than 17 million people worldwide and its use is on the rise, with heroin topping the charts for drug-related deaths and health problems. I think I'm going to give it a miss, guys. I'm going to shoot hoops, not heroin. Yeah, that was awful when I wrote it. Were you surprised by just how damaging a simple painkiller could be? Let me know in the comments below if there's a drug that you would like me to check out. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Earth Lab for more science originals. See you next time.